I'm on? Okay. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Hope you all rested well. It was a little chilly last night. I apologize for all you guys in the tents and things out there. I had a nice cabin on the hill, although we didn't have the heat on, so I think I was as cold as you were. <laughs> so anyway, I thank you for turning out uh, this morning, uh, as many as you have. And uh, by way of introduction to this particular uh, presentation, when I first uh, had accepted the creation calendar, and this was, I think, about June, a very dear feastkeeping friend uh, that I had met just within the last year um, happened to be at our house. It was in July at this point, and uh, she was very intently listening to the scripture that I was presenting to her, and she said, Troy, she says, this all sounds wonderful, but how has this escaped the historical writers? I mean, why, where's the precedent? Where has this been recorded in history? At the time, I didn't have that information. I just kind of had to say, well, I, my, my gut reaction was, it's in here, what do you need history for? You know, and, uh, but I knew she had a point. There's always a paper trail, right? There's, the, nothing happens without a paper trail. And uh, so there had to be somebody that recognized this somewhere in history, uh, it, it seemed to me, so, uh, but I didn't have the information then. Well, that was then, this is now. <laughs> I do have, I have had, I have done, what's, my syntax is pretty bad this morning. I, <laughs> I have done a little bit more research since then and I have found quite a bit of evidence in history and uh, the scholarly writings, if you will, that do support this understanding. And these, these are scholars that are a whole lot smarter than I am. They've got a whole lot more resources and what have you. And, more PhDs and letters behind their name than I do. And so I, I'll trust that they've now granted we should not lean on human understanding, but like uh, I can't remember one of the brethren said it here, if it's supported by this, then we should give it full, I think that was Herb that said it at the first presentation, if these other writings are supported in here, then we do need to give them due consideration. And that's, I guess, all I'm going to ask you guys to do this morning is just to give uh, the information here due consideration. So, the historical, oh, by the way, this is a satellite picture of planet Earth, a flyby at night, and uh, they kind of let the whole Earth go around or whatever, or I guess the satellite went around, as the case may be, but uh, there we are right in there. That's probably Atlanta right there, so we're up there in that little chain right there, right now, and uh, so I thought that was pretty neat. The more industrialized the nation, this looks more impressive when the lights are really dark, but I guess on, on the video it'll be just fine. So anyway, the historical evidence proves the Creator's calendar. It also proves that the Gregorian calendar is corrupt, pagan, and bereft of light. Now after presenting the creation calendars to some friends uh, some time ago, I was personally called a lunatic. And that's what I said in my presentation, my introduction earlier. I, I, I guess I am a lunatic. A lunar tick, okay? I do believe that the, uh, the moon has something to do with time, and if that's the label they want to pin on me, then I'll accept that. I, look, I, I wear that badge proudly, okay? I don't look that as a put down at all, okay? So anyway, and admittedly, after uh, centuries of observing a solar-only calendar, returning to a lunar calendar does seem a bit loony. It did to me. I held this at arm's length for about three months, and it's like, this can't be. I, I can't do this. Okay, um, there are other people that have looked at it and they haven't gotten past the first page of the information I shared with them and say this is the truth without even having read everything else, you know. So the spirit moves a little faster for others and uh, it could be my, my fourth generation Adventist background that kept me from being able to be as honest with the information I was seeing as I would have liked to have been. But uh, I make no apologies for that. The father, he doesn't make any, there's no accidents, you know. It happened like it happened. I'm not complaining, okay? Uh, but anyway, we all kind of grasp and see things at a different pace. Uh, what is disheartening is that rather than face the overwhelming flood of evidence, a few have resorted to calling names. And that's usually, remember I said to be a fruit inspector early on in my introduction? We need to be a fruit inspector. And rather, if they're going to attack the messenger rather than the message, then you know that that person has the wrong fruit, okay? They're bearing, come bearing the wrong fruit. If you want to refute the message and leave me out of it, you can say whatever you want about this truth. You know, but the moment you start slandering myself or whomever else, 
then at that point your witness has been greatly damaged in my opinion. At that point I may or may not have anything else to say. Okay? So let's be careful when we're sharing this with others that we don't slander them for being stupid or foolish or blind or whatever the case may be. You know, we need to be patient with one another. If, if one of my little pet peeves is that the army of the Father is the only army I know that shoots its own wounded. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? The army of believers are the only one that I know of that shoot its own wounded. So we need to be extremely careful for babies in the faith and the seeds that have just been planted or those who are resisting, you know, uh, completely. I mean, I dug my feet in for three months, okay? And some of you may take longer than that. Some of you less long. Hallelujah for that. But let's be careful how we present this. The fact is, of the matter is, the truth is still the truth, even if no one believes it. And error is still error, even if everyone believes it. And you can take that to the bank. Demanding evidence. And I apologize if that's hard to see. Uh, and the question I have to ask is, when is enough enough? When is enough evidence enough evidence? I found an interesting quote here. And one of the other brethren brought up another one that I looked at as well, about that peg that you hang your doubts on. This is very similar to that. Uh, the Almighty gives light to guide those who honestly desire light and truth, but it is not His purpose to remove all cause for questioning and doubt. He gives sufficient evidence to found faith upon, then requires men to accept that evidence and exercise faith. Sufficient. It doesn't say 100%. I still had questions before I moved forward in faith. Okay? And then I found this afterwards, and I said, well, I, that's kind of what I did, you know. Uh, so, and there have been others. I know there have others that I've got some questions for you. And I, I've been, and I apologize, I should have said this off tape, but I've been holed up up there at the, uh, the cabin kind of putting together another presentation that I hadn't, wasn't prepared to do. But uh, Mary Lou has asked me to present that. And so I've kind of been standoffish, which normally isn't my nature. If you've seen me, I normally have a big old smile on my face and a hug in my arms. I'm just ready for somebody to approach me. And I haven't been playing hard to get. I've just been kind of up there preparing another presentation, okay? So I promise I'll be down here all day today. I'll go up for lunch and I'll be right back down here. So anyhow, uh, feel free to, free to pick my brains. But most of the people in the audience have accepted this, but they still have questions. You know, I may not have an answer, but you know what? If I don't have an answer, we'll either find it in here or we won't. Okay? And if it's not in here, if there's still enough evidence to move forward, then let's move forward together. Okay? All right. Psalm 8, 3, and 4. I've got a glare from where I'm at. I hope you all can see that. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. There's that ordained word again. Set in stone, you might say. And I'm not saying that it was chiseled on concrete any place, but the idea was is this ordination of these lights in the heavens was as if it was chiseled in stone, which means it's perpetual, it's forever. It's just a, a metaphor, if you will. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Catch that word right there. Ordained for what? Visitation with man. He put those lights in the heavens. He ordained the revolutions and the lights in the heavens, if you will, the cycles of the lights in the heavens, so we would know when He was going to visit. He said, what are we that you would visit us? Well, if we don't know when we're going to visit with somebody or when He's coming down, wouldn't that kind of present a problem with us? I mean, He's going to surprise us. Genesis 1.14. I just thought that was a pretty cool picture. It actually got a, 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 a rainbow. Obviously, the, the moon's behind that, but there's a, obviously a pretty good storm there. The, to project that uh, it's not a, quite a full moon there. Not quite. Genesis 1.14, And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons. That's Moedim. Days and years. Psalm 104.19. That's a partial eclipse, by the way. He appointed the moon for seasons. Same word, Moedim. The sun knows his going down. I don't know if you realize that, but he, David is nearly quoting... Genesis 1.14 there, the verse I just had up there. Only he's being very specific about which light in the heaven is going to regulate the seasons, as in that Moedim, those appointed times. Again, it does not say which of his holy appointed times. I can't stress this enough. Saying that this passage excludes the Sabbath, which is the weekly appointment, of course, is someone's private interpretation. Okay, they are adding to Scripture or subtracting as the case may be. Scripture does not say that the moon is appointed or ordained for all the appointments except 
the Sabbath. And Leviticus 23 clearly shows that the Sabbath is the first appointed time. I don't know how anybody can get by without seeing this. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feasts, Moedim again, of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be, my, uh, be holy convocations. Even these are whose feasts? Are they the Jewish feasts? Are they Moses' feasts? My feasts, he says. This is the Father speaking. You see that right there? And Yahuwah spoke. What are we supposed to live by? Every word that proceeds from where? Out of the mouth of Yah. That's right. Six days, he says now, shall work be done. But the seventh day is a Sabbath rest of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah and all your dwellings. Flat out talks about concerning the feasts and these are my feasts. And he launches right into the very first one that Adam would have kept. Why didn't he put new moon in here first? I, my personal conviction is Leviticus 23 is the order in which man observed them. New moon isn't listed first because man wasn't around on the first new moon. But the Sabbath he was around for. And then he goes into the annual festivals. And Levit Leviticus 23 covers everything but the new moon. That's the only, the only festival or appointed time, if you will, or holy convocation that um, Leviticus 23 excludes. But of course it is elsewhere in the Torah. Now, we were told to prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Also, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Yah, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. I have been called a false teacher. I'm teaching heresy. Okay? But to this point, have I shown you anything other than Scripture? Have I shown you two and three witnesses to prove every point that I've tried to make? I have. It's just there. It's just in there. We just have to have the faith to move forward. So... Again, just because I'm giving you witnesses, I'm not saying, you know, well, I can put my faith in Troy because he's giving us witnesses. No, do your own homework. I'm just saying I'm convicted, and this is why. You go home and convict, have, let the Holy Spirit convict you. Conviction is not my job, okay? I'm just a beggar trying to show other beggars where they can find bread. You know, well, like we were talking, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I can't make you eat, okay? I can't make you partake of the bread that I have found. But I consult you real good. That's right. <laughs> That's true. I just hope I don't rub it in too hard. That would hurt. <laughs> okay, since we can prove in Scripture that the appointed times are regulated by the luminaries in the heavens, that we hold fast. Now, if you would like to see if the historical record agrees, ladies and gentlemen, here is Exhibit A. I like trials. I'm not a lawyer, but I like trials. I think that we should put everything on, in Scripture on trial to see if it works. This will prove itself, right? So at this point, we've already proved in Scripture that it, it, it agrees with itself. And now I guess what I'm trying to do is go to secular writers and see if secular writers are also saying the same thing Scripture says. And it says, The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent upon the lunar cycle. Both date back, back, blah, both date back to the nomadic period of Israel, originally the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Who was it I was talking to that about last night? At one point the new moon, was that you, Jack? At one point the new moon was held in the same esteem as the Sabbath was. It wasn't a Sabbath, but it was held in the same, it was, these were worship days and everything else was common days. Okay? So the new moon, although there was some work that could be done, it wasn't held in the same light, but they were on equal footing according to uh, several uh, scholars that I found. So anyway, um, originally the new moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath. Gradually it became less important, while the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, or peace and delight of the soul, and produced powerful and beneficent effects outside of Judaism. And of course we see the, the uh, reference there, Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, page 410. Next is Exhibit B. And this is from the Popular and Critical Bible Encyclopedia, 1904 edition, volume 3, page 1497. And it says, Among a few early nations, the lunar months were the readiest large divisions of time. Is that what it says? Oh, oh I misread that, didn't I? Among all the early nations, the lunar months were the readiest large divisions of time and was divided into four weeks. 
corresponding to the phases or quarters of the moon. In order to connect the reckoning by the weeks with a lunar month, we find that all, all ancient nations observe some peculiar solemnities. I wonder if that meant dance. <laughs> some peculiar solemnities to mark the day of new moon. All nations. Now, remember what I said, and it wasn't on tape, but I'll mention it briefly about what Velikovsky found. Going back far enough in history, he found a point in time where everybody, everybody had an identical calendar. Twelve 30-day months and two new moon days every month that were not counted against the work week. That's what Velikovsky found. And in one generation, boom, they all were scattershot and everybody had their own calendar. Okay? That's all these guys are saying. They found the same information. All right? Now allow me to enter into the record Exhibit C. The Hebrew Sabaton was celebrated at intervals of seven days corresponding with changes in the moon's phases. Encyclopedia Biblica, 1899 edition, page 4180. I've had someone, I, I, well, I could, I could drop a name. Some of you probably heard him, but I'm not going to say it who has said that, well, yeah, notice that all these references come from 1904, 1899, 1898. They're all kind of old. Why don't you have anything that says 1995 on it? And their point was, well, yeah, they thought that back then, but now they've done better scholarly work and they've backed away from it. I don't believe that for a second. I think that the, heaven, the, the adversary knew something and he started getting rid of this information. The Heavenly Father's not going to get rid of the truth. Anything that's buried is buried by man or by the, the beast, if you will. All right. If you've lost sight of some light, it's not because the Heavenly Father took it from you. Light is light. Now, granted, He has taken the truth away from, from us when we're in apostasy, but we're trying to not be in apostasy now. And I don't know, is it, I don't, we're, if it's a question, I don't know we have to wait. It was irrelevant to the point, to the quote, but it is there available. I can't remember if I have more of that quote at home or not. Probably do, but it was great being long. Uh, now, there are some who will tell us that the Sabbaths are on the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th days of the month. I've been, anybody approached with that before? Or they'll ask you, why isn't the Sabbath on the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 20th? That's the seventh day. Okay. And I've heard that before. And while this is appealing mathematically, it does not hold true. Every Sabbath found in Scripture that has enough information given in the text to determine the date of the Sabbath is always on either the 8th, 15th, 22nd, or 29th day of the month. And what these other folks are missing who are, A, either asking the question, or B, saying this can't be true because it's not 7, 14, 21, 28, or the scholars who believe that it was, what they are missing is that new moon, that third category of day, which is very clearly in Scripture. You can't get away from that, new moon being a third category of a day. If you have a light switch, okay, if it's new moon day, that light switch has to be up. It's a, it's a switch. That gate to the temple is like a switch. And if it's a work day, it has to be off. If you are worshiping on a calendar that has a new moon day on a work day, Tuesday, for instance, two weeks ago, or some it was Wednesday and some it was Monday, depending on how you calculate it. I don't care how you slice it. There's nobody in this room that had a new moon last month that was not either on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday on the pagan calendar, depending on the way you reckon new moons. Those are work days, friends. On that calendar, that's a work day, and that switch has to be off. But it's new moon day, so it has to be up. There's no right answer because it's the wrong calendar. I cannot stress that highly enough. If you'll just put that new moon back in its rightful place as that third category of day, that is the cog, the club, let me re-say that, that is the club that will knock the tar paper out of the Gregorian calendar because the Gregorian calendar will crumble under its own weight when you put that third category of day back in it. And it was Julius Caesar who removed it in 46 BC. Prior to that, it was still there in the Roman calendar. Other, other nations had removed it prior to that, but it was in 46 BC before Julius Caesar got around to it. And that is what we're left with today. It's a, it's a totally bogus calendar. It doesn't track time the way the Heavenly Fathers does. The way we can prove that the Sabbaths are not on the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th days of the month is the fact that Passover, the 14th of Abib, totally, it, well, it totally destroys that idea because the 14th is always preparation day for the first day of unleavened bread, which is called a Sabbath. It's always a work day. 
So you can't have a Sabbath every, I mean, the first 14th day of the year be a Sabbath. It's never a Sabbath. It's always a preparation day. So get over it, the 7, 14, 21, 28. If anybody has that theology, get over it. If anybody presents that to you, the, the first evidence to destroy that idea is Passover. It's not, a, it's not a Sabbath. It's a work day. It don't work. The evidence is in Scripture that it's 8, 15, 22, and 29. Any way you slice it, the weekly Sabbaths are never on 7, 14, 21, or 28 days of the month. Now, please permit me to enter into evidence Exhibit D. Encyclopedia Biblica, 1899 edition, page 4780. The Hebrew month is a lunar month, and a quarter of this period, one phase of the moon, appears to have determined the week of seven days. Pretty straightforward. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Exhibit E. Scrivener's Dictionary of the Bible, 1898 edition, page 521. In the time of the earliest prophets, the new moon stood in the same line with another lunar observance, the Sabbath. Ezekiel, who curiously enough frequently dates his prophecies on the new moon, describes the gate of the inner court of the new temple looking, toward, looking eastward as kept shut for the six working days but open on the Sabbath and new moon. Scribner's a pretty smart guy. He found this before I did. <laughs> 1898. Please examine for the record, Exhibit F. Universal Jewish Encyclopedia also says that each lunar month was divided into four parts corresponding to the four phases of the moon. The first week of each month began with new moon, so that as the lunar month was one or two days more than the four periods of seven days, these additional days were not reckoned at all. The new moon days, either one or two, were not reckoned at all. Who was it I promised that quote for? I, I talked to somebody this week about their uh, a quote that I had that showed that the ancients did not count the new moons against the week. It's a third category of day. Now, this, now the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia doesn't come out and say that, but it's quite clear. I mean, it doesn't say they weren't counted against the week, but it does say they weren't reckoned. Reckoned against what? The week. They weren't weekdays. They can't be weekdays. You can't have a new moon on a workday or a Sabbath. The new moon is not a Sabbath. And the new moon is certainly can't be on a workday because the switch that has to be thrown one way or the other totally destroys that whole notion. May I present to you Exhibit G. The early Hebrews, and I put that in brackets because in context it's talking about ancient Hebrews, not the current ones. The early Hebrews employed lunar seven-day weeks, which ended with special observances on the seventh day, but nonetheless were tied to the moon's course. Hutton Webster in his book, Rest Days, page 254 and 255. And I, will, I can make this available to you uh, in printed form, where you have all these, the quotes with the references I, if, all I have to do is hook up to either your printer or whatever, or I can mail them to you after I get home. You just make sure you, you tell me what you need before I leave, okay? And if we can't produce it while I'm here, I'll mail it to you once I get home, all right? That way you don't have to write all this stuff down so fast. Bless your heart. <laughs> scribble, scribble, scribble. <laughs> okay, and finally, Exhibit H. The Encyclopedia Biblica again, page... Uh, 4178, 4179, the four quarters of the moon supply an obvious division of the month. It is most significant that in the older parts of the Hebrew Scriptures, the new moon and the Sabbath are almost invariably mentioned together, a point that Jack brought out last night. Uh, the, the lunar month is beyond question an old sacred division of time common to all the Semites. Even the Arabs, who received the week at quite a late period from the Syrians, greeted the new moon with religious acclamations. We cannot tell exactly when the Sabbath became disassociated from the month. Hmm. It is a historical fact that the Sabbath and the weeks are regulated by the moon. Now here's something to consider. How is it that scholars cannot tell when the Sabbath was disassociated from the lunar cycle, while modern Sabbath keepers in general deny that the Sabbath was ever connected with the moon in the first place? 
That's probably the most salient point I'll bring out in this presentation. Scholars know they're just poking around in the sand. They're digging up ancient manuscripts. They're looking at hieroglyphics on the wall. All we have is what they find in this. And guess what? Since when has science ever been able to disprove this? They continued to find, well, they found David. They, at some point, scholars didn't believe David existed. And then Solomon was the same way. And then Sennacherib, remember the Assyrian king? What they do? Lo and behold, they dug up his entire palace out there in the sands of Palestine someplace. It's like, oh, I guess Sennacherib was around. <laughs> Archaeology continues to find evidence to prove Scripture and not the other way around. The ox knows his owner. The ass is master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people doth not consider. We need to have faith, brethren, in what we're seeing. Now, so far, the historical evidence reveals that the Sabbath and the new moon were originally dependent upon the lunar cycle. And I'm not through with historical quotes, mind you. All ancient nations, including Israel, observed months and weeks that were dependent upon the lunar cycle. The new moon, while not necessarily a Sabbath, was on equal footing with the Sabbath, frequently mentioned together in the same passage in Scripture. New moon days, while days of the month, were not counted against the week. Also, the historical evidence reveals that the exact moment the Sabbath became disassociated with the lunar cycle is not clear. Deuteronomy 29.29 29 has an interesting comment. The secret things belong unto Yahuwah, our, our Elohim, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children for a little while, that we may do all the words of this law. Forever, it says. Forever. Yahuwah established the association between the lunar cycle and His appointed times in Genesis 1. It's the book of beginnings. And His appointed times, uh, excuse me, in Psalm 104.19 testifies as a second witness to this fact. The luminaries in the heavens regulate the Sabbath and other divine appointments in time is not a secret. It has been given to us and our children forever. And forever is a long, long time. Now in Malachi 3.6, Yahuwah says that He changes not, correct? Now I know we've taken that out of context and said, and applied it everywhere, you know, and uh, but it does say he changes not. And rightly or wrongly, um, we have some, something to consider here. Either Yahuwah did not tell us the truth regarding the secret things, or he changed his mind regarding the moon regulating his appointed times. Well, did Yahuwah change his mind? He didn't change his mind. He did not lie. The change was not his. You and I changed it. We did it. The adversary invented the counterfeit, but by using and promoting this false calendar, we attested with our heart, soul, and mind to our wholehearted agreement with this counterfeit system. That's what we're guilty of. In our ignorance. I'll add that as a caveat. I don't think the Father judges us in our ignorance. Okay? So we can hold our head high knowing that we didn't know any better. But once we have been told something, we're accountable for it, aren't we? Indeed, we could plead ignorance up till now. Yahuwah, who winks at our ignorance for a season, now calls all men to repent. I love the fact that He winks at our ignorance, but He doesn't just leave us in our ignorance. At some point, He's going to give you enough evidence to say, oops, and then you have a point, you have a, a decision to make. Either I'm going to continue on in my ignorance, or I'm going to swallow my pride, I'm going to, even though I don't, don't understand it all already, I'm, I have to walk forward. That's the only two paths. You either have a right path or a wrong path. There's no middle path. Remember, you cannot eat at the cup of, devil's in the cup of, you can't walk both sides of the fence, okay? If you ever tried walking on a fence and falling on both sides of the fence, you know what I'm talking about. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't eat at the cup of devil, devils in the cup of Yahuwah. It, you're mixing the holy with the profane. I'm just grateful that he's given us the opportunity to move forward. Now, while you're digesting this, uh, would you like to see the historical evidence of what the early assembly 
in the first, second, and third centuries was doing with this calendar issue. Yes. Okay? I was talking about ancient Israel.